Okay, hello everybody, Evil Slayer, and welcome back for another episode of Tutorial Survival. This episode's going to be a little bit different this time. Uh, I have to really condense this thing. Uh, so, and this is actually my second attempt at doing this video. I had, had to do them all again after I realized that there was some audio that I didn't like in the original attempt. So here, here we are again for my end. Uh, so anyway, while in between episodes, I went ahead and did some offline, off-camera work on the base and added some necessary things to our base structure to make living a little bit easier. The main things I added were a cargo container uh, off the side of the roof. Uh, refinery that we were normally docking our ship to, and that just allows our ship to deposit extra ore into that cargo container that won't go into the refineries because they're filled up, but the ship's not sitting there with ore in it. Uh, I also added two large hydrogen tanks and an uh, oxygen tank to the back of the facility, along with several oxygen generators, including the one that was originally on a different part of the base that I had built earlier. I moved that one over there and then added three more so that as we mined ice, we're filling those up so that we have that extra storage. And that base is pretty much good to go. There's really nothing else that you necessarily need to add to a base like that for a starter base. The only exception to that rule, I would say, is... In, in servers that you have to worry about defending your grid against either players or, or maybe some light drone attacks, I went ahead and built up a sentry gun, so to speak. It's basically, it's an interior turret, um, but it's essentially a sentry gun, and you put rifle ammo on it. You can't pipe it up to anything, so you can't auto-feed it ammo, but... It's a nice basic defense turret that will, at the very least, make it hard for players to offline grief you. And I recommend hiding those in, in nooks and crannies, uh, especially upside down on ceilings that are kind of tall, because you'd be surprised how many people never look up. Anyway, so that's the base. Moving on to the next thing. The ship. I said last episode we were going to build a large grid ship in survival. I had some major thoughts about that after the, I had re already recorded that episode. I had started thinking hard about that one. The thing with building large grids in survival is that depending on what you're building and, and how much of a ship you're building, it can take quite a long time. So even for just a decent large grid survival ready ship, like the one that we have in front of us here, um, or in front of you guys, it, you're looking at about a couple hours, depending on resources and manpower, a couple of hours to a couple of days to get that completely built and, and ready to launch. Cause not only do you have to build it, but then you got to mine the eyes and fill the hydrogen tanks. And these tanks take forever to fill up because the hydrogen, the, the gas generators only produce so much oxygen and so much hydrogen from the ice that they essentially melt to produce those gases. Uh, in comparison to the tank's actual size and storage. So I went ahead and just using my cheatsy admin powers, because it's a s single player survival, I went ahead and just copy pasted my signature ship, the Dark Hound, in, because it's, it's a good example of what I personally think a good survival ship is. It's got plenty of storage. Uh, it's got several large con cargo containers for plenty of storage. It's got two refineries and two assemblers so that you can 
process materials on the go. It's got jump drives. It's got enough hydrogen thrusters to where we can be able to leave the planet as well as land on other planets if we want, if we desire to. Uh, and, and it's got enough defenses on it to where if we run into any major problems, we can easily defend ourselves from anything King has thrown at us. So, um, uh, that's that. And I know a lot, I know a few people are probably going to look at me and, and be like, well, you didn't build it legitly in survival. So is this, okay, look, this isn't really a certain, this isn't really a me surviving series. This is a tutorial on surviving series is tutorial being the focus word there. This is me showing you new players, these are the things that you really need to think about when you're in survival mode in Space Engineers. Okay, so, I mean, I've got countless of hours, I've got over 6,000 hours in this game. Uh, I, you know, when it comes to survival, I feel pretty confident in my abilities. Um, so, if anybody wants to hold it against me, that I went ahead and copied and pasted the ship in, that's fine with them. But I'm I'm pretty solid in in my reasoning here because it's for me it's about saving you guys the heartache of having to watch thirty watch me build this videos of me building up a ship in survival. Okay, we just skipped past all of that because to me all of that's boring, and I feel that you guys get the gist of okay. Well, we have to build everything up by hand in survival. I feel like that point's been made already. So we're going to skip past all that and we're going to get to the good part where the ship is done. And now we come fast forward to today where the ship is not only just done, it's in space. Yes. I went ahead and launched it into space too. Uh, and I did that to kind of speed that up because it takes a good couple of minutes to get a ship into space from a planet like this one. You're looking about five or six minutes of us just sitting there going, we space. So anyway, we are inside our ship here and this is, this is essentially the kind of the main area. So we got our, our med bay here. I have a couple of cryo, chamber blocks. These I haven't shown off yet. So the thing with these is that you hop in it and then it'll refill all your stats. And not only that, but it provides a safe place for your character you know, on a server. If you're getting ready to log off, uh, you can hop in one of these, or if the server's about ready to, <coughs> excuse me, restart, you can hop in one of these real quick, and what it will do is it will save your character as well as their inventory. Because if you log out with your character standing around like this on the server and they have stuff on them, the server is eventually going to remove your character ca character. Character character. Yeah, brain. It's early morning, guys. My brain is just waking up. Uh, the, the game will eventually remove your character from the world on the server, and anything in their inventory will be lost. So any elite tools you have, any components you have on you, if you can't build one of these right away, because if, if we mouse over this with the welder, we can see that this requires medical components. So you may not be, be able to build one of these real quick. Uh, you may not be able to build that in survival from the start. So the other thing that I can suggest is that we have a bed here. This is essentially this, I believe this is a DLC block, but if you have this, you can build it up. It doesn't require medical components, but if you sleep in this before you log in or log off, uh, it will do the same thing. So moving on from that, let's see, where do I want to go next? Um, we'll go to the CIC. So this is a command and control center bridge. This is designed as an emergency backup bridge in case our main bridge, which is up there, gets taken out. We can operate the ship from here and we have some basic functionality as well as we can oversee from this station. We can oversee the hangar here. Uh, I've got a ship builder 
over there that I'll get to a little in a little bit more detail into that. But if we're welding up ships, we can kind of supervise that from here. I've got a programmable block that's running a script that I made myself, and all it does is it essentially manages some things on the grid to kind of help my uh, ADHD brain when it comes to not forgetting important things like, you know, watching your battery levels or how much fuel you have left in the reactor or my personal favorites not paying attention to gases and running out of hydrogen or oxygen, because you would think that operating the ship here, I would pay attention to the fuel gauge in the lower right-hand corner. Yeah, uh, my 80, again, my ADHD brain doesn't always do that. I tend to, for some reason, that doesn't process in my brain sometimes. So I have the script uh, manage that and it kind of gives a giant, warning flash message in my face saying, Hey, this is low or, you know, get some ice. So we're going to move up to the bridge next. I'm just going to use my jetpack here because we're in space. So typically most ships, large grid ships will have a bridge like this, or maybe something a little bit bigger and fancier. I have a couple of control seats. Uh, I went, the extra mile on this thing and did a little fancy frou-frou thing. Um, so we have this DLC projector thing here and I've got it projecting a small uh, digital copy of a little wolf drone bot that I I made. Uh, so it kind of looks like the, the AI scripts avatar there. So you can do all sorts of... Uh, that's just to show that you can do all sorts of fun fancy things with your bridges. Like, don't make... Uh, you don't have to make just like a quick generic bridge. I mean, just go wild with your imagination. Make it something awesome that you're going to enjoy. Because uh, unlike small ships, these large grid ships, when you're out in space, you're going to be living off these things. So <laughs> this is essentially your home in space. Make it look good. Make, make it so that it makes you feel happy. So... Back here, we can access our storage tanks. We've got four large hydrogen tanks down there, and I know some people are going to look at me and be like, wow, that's insane. Um, yeah, this ship is big and heavy, and it's got three hydrogen, large hydrogens aimed downwards to give it lift for planets, so it needs that fuel. Um, we got two large reactors here. They do not have... There's this ship is bone dry guys for those of you who might still be grumbling in the comment section oh you pasted a ship and you cheated no this thing has no resources i literally took nothing into space with me so we have to still go find iron we have to go find uranium i can't even use the jump drives on this thing because these don't have fuel i have six battery blocks on this thing that are currently all that's giving it power so we kind of we'll come down here, and I'll show that all. Um, got assemblers, refineries are kind of shoved off to the back and sides there. Our cargo containers, central piping. We got a few of these large grid gyros. Yes, it takes this many to move this thing. There's more on the other side too. And the big thing I wanted to point out with these is look at those resources. You're looking at 600 steel plates just for one gyro. Okay, so depending on how well you did your base and how many refineries and assemblers you have versus how much ore you have to process or what your mining capabilities are, this is part of what adds to that, that build time in, in welding up these large ships. So we've got our three batteries on the side, then there should be three more on the other side. And for some reason, this thing is not pressurized. I got to figure that out at some point. Oh, I need a lot of interior plates in. 
Small steel tubes. Okay. Well, I hope I have enough iron for all that. There we go. Okay. So, as you can see, the oxygen is now starting to fill. So, that's what it was. And as we can also see, the sound, when you have realistic sound, it changes when you go from not pressurized to pressurized. So those are all good. So lesson learned, you can do that in those awkward situations. And it's just because those cargo containers there are not, they don't seal things. Okay, so I just need more steel tubes and then I'm good. Oh, hey, look, more steel tubes. So all that's good. Perfect. So now we just need a large cargo container. Uh, we can go to cargo containers, click that, and then go to scroll down. Large cargo container. We'll just check all this stuff in there. And then now, because we have stuff in it, we go, boom, there it is. Okay, um, control panel, what we can do is we can go large cargo container. So these four right here. So we can change the name so that components. Do this one to ores and ingots. Or actually, no, we'll just do ingots because we have four. I like to kind of organize things and then ores. So now our ship's pressurized. So that's good. Um, now we just got to hunt that uranium. But I'm thinking that that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, like I said before at the beginning, this episode's going to be like a hop hodgepodge of like video clips of me showing you like what got done all, uh, and getting you all caught up. And yeah, this this video is kind of weird. And yes, I did technically cheat the ship in, but it's the only time I'm going to do that in this series and that's just to save time in the sense of me not wanting to upload a bunch of videos of here's my progress on the large grid here's more progress because it, it i had three options either by time lapse welding it up and like using video segments like okay place first block time lapse forward okay here's a couple more blocks time lapse forward I could have done that, but then that means that I would have had to actually done multiple recording sessions of me welding the thing up to be able to do that properly. I could have done this, or I could have just recorded 30 actual s sessions of me slowly welding this thing up. Okay, so I opted for this, because this, to me, was the simplest and easiest solution to just kind of skip all of that work and all of the boringness and get forward into what this tutorial series is actually about, which is showing you the individual blocks and how you can use them and how we do grids and the different things that we need to take into account with our grids. Okay, so because, for example, quick recap, we're in space. I just had to fix something on this grid because it wasn't pressurizing. 
it doesn't sound like a big deal, but after long periods of time, I would have wasted all of the oxygen we had stored up. And I would have been in a world of hurt because I need those oxygen tanks so that I can refill with this thing. And I also need those tanks because another thing you can do with those tanks is because we have no ice. If I go to control panel and go oxygen tank, okay, one and two, auto refill bottles. So now I go into the inventory and I find tank oxygen tank. If I place my, uh, oh, I don't have an oxygen bottle. Well, okay. If I did the same thing in control panel, hydrogen tanks or the hydrogen tanks, I forgot I had the wrong bottle. Okay, so if I want hydrogen tank and I drop my bottle in that, boom, it fills my my bottle. So you can actually fill up your bottles from the gas tanks themselves. You don't necessarily need ice. You just need your tanks full. But in order to be able to do that, I need to reserve that gas as much as possible. So pressurize, make sure your ships are properly designed and pressurizable before leaping into space. That's the lesson learned there. Okay, so yeah, that's gonna be a lot. That's gonna be enough of that. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the video here. Uh, thank you all for watching. Be sure to click the like buttons and subscribe if you haven't. And I will see everybody in the next video. Later.